Ooh. I haven't gone live in a while and YouTube uh, kind of changed things up. The last time I went live, it, it was a vertical and I didn't like that. So, hello everyone. So I just made a video of Henson and the round pin with this filly. She's a yearling and we'll be going to her new home today. So Henson just did a little work with her in the round pin and now he's trimming her. So I thought I went, I did a video on the round pin. I'll just go live for her maybe second trim ever. Okay, Let's see where everybody's from. We've got Wisconsin, we've got Wisconsin, Wyoming, Iowa. Yes, it is a pretty day. Mary says, hello, Mr. Jerry. Hello, Mary. <laughs> we, we don't go live very often because we talk so much smack. This is the trouble. <laughs> We're going to try not to uh, talk to you tonight. <laughs> Houston, Texas. Kentucky. Are you already done with her first foot? Yeah. Yeah. He did that one. Now he's on this one. Colorado. Thanks, Mary. Say hi, Henson. Yacht A. <laughs> Retired farrier here. I miss doing this work. I don't. <laughs> hi, Charles from San Antonio. You could have that work. <laughs> I sold all my tools. <laughs> Henson had to buy his own. What time are they coming to pick this one up? Uh, we're, she said probably around four-ish, so that's about three Arizona time, I'm guessing, because they're from New Mexico. Okay. Uh, we've got some other stuff we've got to get it to pass up and put these tabs and all these tabs. And this is a little unexpected. <laughs> um, we do not have cows in the Adamana area. That's a different, um, I don't know. Different ranch. Different ranch. I'll say different outfit, but yeah, that's not us. We don't go up that far. We're more to the east. Hello. Oh, Carnahan Farm. I think that's how you say it. Maybe once. Maybe once. Henson says maybe once. I remember catching her, but I don't remember being uh, that we trimmed her. So this could be the first time, or it could be the second, because she hasn't been caught for. We were saying about six months. Yeah, it's been about six months since she's been caught, and she's just been in a pasture, and so we don't see her every day. So I think she's doing really well. Her sire is uh, Go Dash Leo Hancock, and her mother is um, Dusty Sagehen. Has you ever been brushed? That was the first time. <laughs> Marcy says, I live in Clagato, also in Mesa. I drive through frequently. So you stop by our store, our lovely store. 
<laughs> Probably does. C come by Navajo, stop in and get some merchandise there. And if you can't get it there, just call Danielle. She'll have it. But I used to live in uh, White Druin, so I know Clagato a little bit. Yeah, our baseball team just played Ganado uh, a couple days ago. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, this uh, somebody wants to know how many babies have dropped. Um, I, I don't have any babies on the ground. I don't like to have any of them until May. It's because our weather is just so erratic. And by May, it's pretty settled, and I don't have you know, a lot of weather to contend with. and So I don't like them to hit the ground till May. So I don't have any on the ground yet. Pretty soon, we'll be driving through the pastures and see one or two. And then there's a, the biggest group of mares is in the river where we don't even see them anyway. Uh, we can see them from afar, but we haven't gathered them up, but that's coming. I gathered about 25 the other day, and there were some that were close to foaling, but they're not, uh, they don't have foals on them yet. Hello, Badger from South Texas. I had somebody call me from uh, Texas yesterday, and they said they were greened up and they were cutting clover. Um, our green's just barely starting to come in, and this is Arizona. It's kind of crazy. Hello from Flagstaff. I love Flagstaff. I need to get back there one of these days. I need to I go love to all the Club. hippies in Flagstaff. <laughs> what? And the traffic. That's why we don't go live. We talk crap. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you like? Just, just to remind you, we love everyone. We probably talk smack about everyone too, even ourselves. So mostly just love the mountain over there. Most of the mountain <laughs> makes me feel good. Oh yeah, gives you good vibes. Gives me good vibes. Hello from South Dakota, Victoria, British Columbia. Thank oh, wow. you, Jim. Enjoy your videos. He says. Cool. So this is the third foot that he's on. So, so look at all the cockaburs in her tail. She's just been out to pasture and there's all these, you know, somebody called them some kind of berry. What was it? Cackleberries. Cackleberries. These are cockaburs. Cackleberry. And, and so I'm, I probably shouldn't be messing with them as he's trimming, but, um, you know, we like to give him a challenge. So I'll pull a couple of them out while I'm just messing around. A lot of times we'll just take like WD-40 and just douse their tails or manes with WD-40 and they come out pretty easy. But uh, WD-40 is way too expensive anymore, so we don't use that. So now we just use motor, used motor oil. Yeah, used motor oil is the best. <laughs> We're just kidding, we don't do that. Use motor oil, mix it with some diesel. Some diesel to thin it down. Yeah, some thin of that $5 down. diesel to thin it down just a bit. Yeah, really. Then it sprays good through the bottle. Yeah. Through the hose. <laughs> Pouring rain in southern Minnesota. Wish I was there. Yeah, we've got a nice day finally. Yesterday was breezy and cold. Today is a little bit breezy, but it's a little warmer. That's yeah, a nice day. And we're supposed to hit 70s and be 70s all week after this. I did break a sweat on Friday and Saturday. I had to take my jacket off. Um, those are the first two days. I actually broke a sweat, and my wife said, man, you're starting to smell like a man. And so, <laughs> anyway, I took a shower after that. Smell like a little girl after that. <laughs> she might not have put it that gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says, how did the J. Hart brand come about? We get this question a lot. Okay, well, the, the J. Hart brand, this is the deal. You know, this has a, been a family ranch for a long time and there were probably three or four different brands there was a circle one there was a lazy jy or a cy however you wanted to look at it uh, and the book we is j spear we had um what was the other one that we had uh, five a, a, what, something five what was it five five i don't know i think it was a five spear so anyway there was quite a few brands that were the original ranch well when 
everything was said and done and Nancy and I had, had actually uh, purchased this ranch, we found out that all of our cows were branded with somebody else's brand. And that was the Circle One, which was given to her brother. So uh, we didn't have that brand. And so we had to go find a brand. We just looked through the brand book at the time of Arizona. And uh, she pulled up uh, this Jay Hart brand. She says, you know, I kind of like this Jay Hart brand. And I said, yeah, but what does it mean? She says, well, it means um, Jay Love. I said, but it's upside down. She says, well, don't even look at it like that. Or our last name is Wynn, so it could be looking as a W also, she said. So that's how the brand came about. We actually just picked it out. We didn't design it. It was just there. We used it, and we do like it. We think it's a nice brand. So Arizona has only certain brands that you can choose from, right? Yeah. Well, unless you... You can actually make your own brand, yeah. and you can apply, and it takes a little time. But we didn't really have the time because we found out that all of our cows were uh, owned by someone else, brand-wise. And so we wanted to get them branded as soon as possible. So that's why we just kind of went in, found the brand, and applied for it, and got it, and then we rebranded everything. So that's how we ended up with that. Because the old brand was a Circle One, and then before that, the Spurlock brand was uh, a Lazy JY. Um, which they call the CY, but it was actually a lazy JY in the book. And we couldn't get any of those because they had gone to other family members. Cool. Well, there you have it. There's the story of the J Hart. J Love. <laughs> J Love. J Dub. J Dub. J W. <laughs> However you want to look. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, John from Florida. Wished I would have found you when I lived in Arizona. <laughs> Let's see. Hi, Nancy. She says, I love watching your videos. I learned a lot from watching. And I think that's kind of what our hope is, that people would just kind of glean information as we go because we didn't intend for this channel to be a... Uh, what do you say? Um, Tells you how it's done. How it's done because we're not professing to know anything. We're just showing what we do. If it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, hey, we're not saying this is the only way to do anything. Uh, this is just what works for us. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, we change it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not trying to be professionals at anything we're just trying to survive <laughs> <laughs> yeah somebody's like show us how you work your barrel horses or a drill for this or that but that's just it's just not our style <laughs> we're not trying to tell anybody how to do anything we just do what works for us and, and we're always up for ideas uh jerry what's the navajo word of the day yachts eh a binna what's that mean Hello, all of our friends. Good morning. Good morning, yeah, good morning, friends. More specifically, good yeah. m morning, morning time. So, we will see your friends tomorrow. Say, Yats eh, Benna. And they will be a little confused, but then you can tell them what it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get the trend. We're gonna get the trend going to where everyone who, who does not speak Navajo will be addressing their friends in the morning with Yat. <laughs> Let's see. All right, done. All done, huh? Done. Uh, Henson, how long have you been training horses? Have you guys watched his bio? He has a bio up, no. uh, our introduction video. I think like maybe four years, maybe. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when you're a cowboy, you're always training horses. And you've been a cowboy your whole life? Yeah. Henson was training horses when he didn't want to train horses. He wanted to ride bulls. And uh, I might have tricked him a little bit. I said, well, you'd be a better bull rider if you just got on more horses. And so <laughs> uh, he got on more horses. And, and he rode bulls pretty good. So I don't know if it worked or not, but uh, it worked for me because I got him to ride the horses. But he's been on horses since he was just a little boy. Always really calm. 
he didn't get riled up when the horse got a little excited or dancing around. Now his mom on the other side, um, Nancy would, would freak out a little bit and she'd get a little bit upset with me. I said, just, he's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. And he usually he's was. fine. His bones are still growing and they're soft. Yeah, his bones are still growing and he's soft. <laughs> well, he might have been soft. He's still kind of soft, but anyway. <laughs> I'm going to get my tail whipped here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably the first time this horse has ever been brushed. I guarantee it is. Okay, let me see the comments. Western. Yeah, we don't brush them in the summertime. Yes, horse, I agree with Thomas. He says, hello from Western New York State. Horsemanship is a journey. We can all learn more all the time. That's for sure. What is your opinion on zebra crosses, a zorse or a zonkey? You know, I've seen them in a picture. I've never really seen one. Um, I guess I've seen them from afar. I, I'm just not into that. That's not my thing i'm not into exotic type of things um our horses are you know they have a purpose and that is to help us on the ranch and and also give joy to us and give joy to others who like horses so i don't know anything about them i don't have an opinion one way or another just don't know anything about them okay let's see what else hi Anne marie from alberta what is the big structure back there that is a barn that was we were constructing quite a few years ago and um, we got those up and then we um, couldn't really afford the metal <laughs> and so we never finished it and I don't know it just doesn't ha hasn't been something that's that important I guess so we haven't finished it and still can't afford it yeah metal <laughs> metals high and we uh, would rather put our money in other places, usually in our animals. Yate <laughs> uh, Antonio from Grand Canyon, um, he's asking what my clans are. If uh, you watched my introduction video, my clans are in there. I am Hurunwakni and Shlimp Belagana Bashishchin. So I am half white on my dad's side. That's basically what that means. Um, says, what do you find that works for you when training a yearling to be good with your feet? Their feet, sorry. Well? Well, I think you just demonstrated a lot of that just a minute ago, Danielle. What Henson did was he, he put uh, her in the round pen and he, he worked her around with some meaningful things that helped her. But not only that, as it settled her down, and there's a, a, a little bit of trust there that wasn't there before. And she used the thinking side of her brain. Yeah. That's what, I'll put a video out of Henson having this horse in the round pen, and that's what he said in the round pen, that the whole purpose of that was to get her to start to think and use her, her mind. Yeah. That way, when he brought her over here, and he, as you can tell, he separated her from the round pen. He brought her here to a, a quiet place, and he just kind of started touching her feet, things that she was used to in the round pen as far as him touching her, not necessarily her legs or feet, but she could stand it. And so that was just the start of it. And then of course you've seen, he did put a rope on just for a little bit uh, when she would get a little uh, pushy or try to run by. And that way he could control her without getting in too much danger. <laughs> and that really, she just realized, okay, things are good when I stand here. You can pick my feet up and it's not gonna hurt me. And so that's kind of what she figured out. So it just was a process of starting her to think and then just continuing it on to that. And sometimes it's a lot of work all at once. So you you have to be prepared to, to endure that, I guess. And Henson does a great job at that. When he starts a process, he, he goes ahead and finishes it. So it worked out pretty good. Okay, let's see. How much for colts? So the foals that drop will start at 3,500 and go to, or is that it? Is that right? Yeah, they'll go. They'll start at 3,500 for kind of, um, you know, and I and I don't even like to say this. The plain bays and sorrows were always a little cheaper, and man, it's not because you're any less horse. 
It's just they don't have that flash. They don't have the wow factor that some people are looking for. And the ones that have the wow factor uh, go up to around 5,500. You know, the Palominos, Buckskins, the Blue Rones, Red Rones, Bay Rones, Duns, Gruyels, those kind. And it's not because the bays or sorrels are any less hoarse. It's just they're a little bit harder to move because of the wow factor, I think. Yeah. Let's see. I think that's about it. And my battery's about to die, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe video Henson working this horse if, if he does. I think he is going to work her. She's still available. This bay roan here is, is by Mr. Arizona, who was the son of Mr. Junewood. And, and then her mother is um, Frosty, and she has some of the Dash for Cash, Driftwood, Hancock lines on her. She'll be a nice filly. Okay, so watch out for the video that I post of this um, little filly getting worked in the round pen. And I'm glad to catch you guys for our live that we did today. And I'm glad everything worked. YouTube changed their format, so now I think I might go live a little bit, a little bit more. One last question: uh, Do you have a price on this filly right here? Um, I do have a price. I would take thirty-seven fifty for her um, within the month. After the month, she's going to go up. So she's a yearling. During April, yes. Well, I I think she was born in um, right at the first of May sometime. I don't know exactly her birth date. I can't remember. It's like having sixty kids. I don't remember all their birth dates. <laughs> I don't even remember eight of my kids' birth dates usually. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Favorite music, I don't know. We like Zach Brown, Charles Wesley Godwin, some of that old, I don't know, old style type of country music. Not the new country music, but look up, um, I don't know, Red Club. What, what are you into right now? What? What kind of music are you into right now? Right now, uh, usually Charles Wesley Godwin. Mm -hmm. um, William Clark Green. Taylor McCall. Yeah, Taylor McCall. Zeppelin. Yeah, we like all the old rock. Zeppelin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mostly just Charles Wesley Godwin right now. Red Clay Strays. Oh, yeah. Red Clay Strays. Yeah, that's what I'm listening to. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see you next time. I meant to Beyonce! No Beyonce, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs>